guys. So, to kind of fill you guys in on what happened since the last video, to be honest, this is one of the craziest last weeks that we've had in a long time that I can even remember. So, the planner is at a standstill since literally the last video. I will talk about that uh, towards the end of the video. And basically, we're waiting on parts right now for it. But I will explain everything that's going on with that. Since the video, though, uh, we ended up getting a 48-foot van trailer. Uh, like I slightly mentioned in the previous video about us getting a van trailer for a tender build. That got delivered to us uh, towards the beginning of the week, or first part of last week, I believe. And it's a 48 foot with a side door and a lift gate. Yesterday, Dad and I went over to Coldwater, Ohio, over to Fennig Equipment and picked up two 2,800 gallon uh, Enduroplast tanks and also the three inch John Blue pump for uh, the tender build. We're still waiting on a couple things that are on back order though. Uh, we ordered a 1550 uh, cone bottom tank and a uh, 60 gallon inductor tank. So those two tanks are supposed to be in by the end of the month and basically what the plan is today at least as far as I know we're going to try and wrestle a 97 inch wide tank into a 100 inch wide trailer interior width because it's a 102 wide trailer but the interior width 100 and the problem is though the lift gate and decreases that width down to 90 inches so we got to turn this tank or both these tanks we're just going to put one in though today because the cone bottom is going to go in between these tanks uh wrestle a 2800 gallon thousand pound tank in sideways and turn it and slide this thing in so this is going to be fun <laughs>
said it couldn't be done from that bottom corner there to there it's 99 inches and the interior width of the trailer is 99 inches and the actual width of the tank is 97 and we got the thing in there on its side and got the thing turned with the help of the loader with the boom and the forklift and the pallet jack on the inside in there and it's in so when it's all said and done we're gonna have about an inch of space theoretically you know if the trailer is 99 inches interior width and the tank's 97 you know theoretically we're gonna have an inch of space on either side of this and this tank will get slid not quite all the way up to the front but up to the front and we're going to have a 60 gallon inductor tank somewhere right here a 1550 gallon cone bottom tank somewhere probably about about right where the pallet jack is sitting somewhere in here and the second 2800 gallon tank will probably come about to right here and go on all the way to the back then and whatever space we have left then will be for seed then so everything in here will be plumb for three inch and basically we'll come in the floor somewhere over here we'll have to come in the floor a couple of uh in a couple areas in here to get down to the pump because the infro tank is going to be for or the cone bottom tank is going to be for infro and uh, for the applicator use it's not going to be used at all so we'll have to come in a couple spots in the floor to tie in the infro on a different line uh and keep that separate from the starter lines on so coming down here we're going to come off about four feet from the edge of this door here about somewhere right in here and mount the uh john blue three inch pump that we bought from fennig and make up like a cradle here and weld something up and weld it up underneath the frame here and uh come in the floor and tie it all together basically the reason why we're mounting it on the outside is that way uh, we don't have fertilizer leaking through these boards and rusting out the frame underneath here because that would not be good at all. So after we get this 2800 gallon slid up to the front and in place, we got to wait for the 1550 gallon cone bottom tank and the 60 gallon inductor tank to come in over at Fennig so we can run over there again, pick those tanks up and bring the cone bottom in from that door because that is 85 inches in diameter so it's not going to fit in this door here so we'll have to bring that in from the back door slide it in get it in place get the inductor tank in put it in place and then do basically what we spent all morning doing for that one and do that for the second one and turn it on side slide it in get it in place set it down rotate it and hope to god that we can do that all over again <laughs> So not only is the fertilizer tender build put on hold for two weeks until uh, those tanks come in that are on back order, uh, the planner is also put on hold for the next week and a half until some more parts come in. So when we were getting ready to put the Copperhead Ag mud scrapers on for the gauge wheels, Dad decided he wanted to swap out the standard four and a half inch gauge wheels for the uh, narrow three inch gauge wheels. These are John Deere four and a half inch gauge wheels. Dad does not really care much for this design. Just personal preference. He just never really cared for them too much. Uh, to be honest, we can't remember exactly how many years ago it's been since we put those on. These are Shoop uh, standard uh, three inch narrow gauge wheels. We ran into a problem with these. That's not supposed to wobble like that. So we started taking a look at all of these and we realized that the bearing in here, that they put in all these gauge wheels, they did not put in straight. As you can see here, some of the plastic has been chiseled out there when they ended up drawing these up and they ended up not getting drawn up straight, causing them to wobble like they did on that row unit there. So we started looking at all of them and we soon found out all of them are like that. So we ended up contacting Shoop and they said they would swap them out. And we said, what's the chance of all of them, even at their warehouse, looking like that? 
and they soon realize, yeah, more likely uh, our stock's gonna be no different than what we gave you or what we sold you. So we got to looking online and the best thing that we would go to then in order to alleviate the wob wobble issue or bypass a chance of having gauge wheels like that being sold to us is to buy the open uh, open style mudsmith gauge wheels that have a cast housing uh, and a bearing in the center of it that is guaranteed to be straight. And actually in their advertising, they flat out say guaranteed to be straight with no wobble. So the only issue on that is, well, a couple issues. One, they are double the price of those. And two, they are on back order till I think March 26. And today is March 14th. So we gotta wait quite a bit for those to even come in. So Shoop is going to call us the moment they pull into their warehouse and we are going to haul down to Kankakee, Illinois as soon as they get those and hurry up and put them on the planner and finally be done with this. Not only are we having issues with gauge wheels, but we decided to go ahead and replace all the Keaton seed firmers as you can see here. Our Keaton seed firmers after closer inspection uh, were worn out and if I remember correctly we were debating on doing this last year dad and I were and I said you know we probably should replace them and dad said you know what we'll do it next year well next year's now and we pretty much for almost forgot about that till we started looking at them and realizing we need to replace those and as I started pulling them off and dad started examining the new versus the old ones, he was pretty relieved that we decided to change them. Only issue there, the set screw on one of the brackets, if I can find it right here, I ended up having to tear the whole rail unit apart because the one set screw in the quick attach bracket, as you can kind of see there between the two uh, disc blades there, uh, the set screw that holds that uh, Keaton seed firmer in there in place and prevents it from coming out was completely stripped out. So I had to completely tear that apart and lo and behold found out that that whole uh, quick attach bracket in there that holds that Keaton firmer in there was pretty well worn out and shot. So we ended up ordering one from Shoe. Not realizing that when they put that in the box, they ended up giving us not a Keaton seed firmer quick attach bracket, but two Keaton seed firmers. So we're going to end up probably going down to our precision guy because he knows exactly what we need and go down there, pick up a quick attach bracket from him, put that on the planner and finally be done with the Keaton seed firmers. Hopefully. <laughs> Once that's done and the gauge wheels are on, this thing is finally done, but not for another week and a half or almost two weeks yet. So until the parts come in for the planter and the tanks come in for the fertilizer tender build, we've got a whole bunch of seed that we can finally start moving out this week. And also this week we're going to send over some beans to get treated and basically we're twiddling our thumbs until parts come in for the planter and tanks come in for the build. So more than likely, next video will be on some highlights from the uh, National Farm Machinery Show because I haven't put that video out yet just because I haven't taken the time to edit that yet. I did not do a lot of filming down there, so it's just pretty much going to be a highlight reel, but there's some pretty cool stuff in there. I'll probably do a couple videos this week on us delivering seed because actually probably some of you guys don't even know that we are Pioneer Seed Dealers. So I'll probably do some videos on that just to kind of show you guys uh, what we do uh, for delivering seed. Also, quick side note, we did sell our 35 foot McDon and 36 foot head cart. So currently we're without a draper right now and head cart. Not to worry, by the end of this month, if not probably around the first part of April, a new one will be arriving. As to what it's going to be, what brand, and what size, take a guess down in the comments down below. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, and I will hopefully catch you guys in the next video sometime this week. Mm -hmm.